And uh, I kept thinking to myself that whole day, talking to students, that you know, how could something like that happen to us? And I didn't really, wasn't able to wrap my, my brain around somebody that would inflict such, such pain on other people. And I realized over time uh, that it really came down to the simplicity of ignorance. See, these organizations that were responsible for these cowardly acts of violence, uh, they lacked an understanding and appreciation for what it means to accept the opinions or behavior that doesn't necessarily agree with their own. These organizations believe that since their values and beliefs differed from ours, that we were wrong in the way we thought and the way we behaved. And like we've observed throughout human history, human nature tends to address these types of differences with anger, hate, and violence. You know, and it, just as a person, I can tell you right now, I, I don't know why. I can't appreciate that, I don't know that, uh, why people would treat each other that way, because we're all humans, and we all have an internal desire to just be seen, to just be understood, and appreciated. And I know, speaking on behalf of all of you, you just want to seek help, health and happiness in life. And it's that simple. But yet, time after time, human nature seems to revert itself back to a mindset that you need to think as I do, and you need to behave as I do, or else. See, 9-11 is never going to be forgotten for the lives lost and the acts of so many heroes that day that gave their own to save others, and many more over the years fighting for our freedom and our way of life. I take great pride in being an American and what we stand for as a country, even though sometimes I feel we have a way of losing our way. But to me, I express my patriotism by doing the very best every single day with integrity. That's how I give to my community. I take a lot of pride in being a principal and trying to be a role model for young children, and that's the value that I think I bring to the community, the value I bring to my school. I have a lot of pride in that. So today we're going to honor all those who have made personal sacrifices for our country by demonstrating good character and citizenship. Pillars of what a high school student stands for. So I want you to take the very simple messages that you're going to hear today as a commitment to be a model citizen. I want you to appreciate the value that you and others bring to this world and the impacts that we can all make by simply just being kind. So I'd like to take a moment at this time for silence and remembrance of this day in our country's history. Okay, thank you. And at this time, I'd like to turn it over to Mr. Cohen to say a few words. Thank you, Mr. Thomas. So, it's really hard to believe that it's been 20 years, and you know, as a teacher there that day, Mr. Thomas has said he remembers. You know, we were we were friends, young teachers back then, and and I, I actually was off the period that the first two planes had hit, and after the first one, you know, no one really knew what, what was going on, and then when the second one hit, it definitely was an eye opener and, and a little scary. Um, and I remember walking down the hallway and seeing a few people, including Mr. Thomas. And then the bell rang and I have to go to class and you know I, I didn't really know what to say. No one really knew what to say that day. Um, but we did the best we could. Uh, you know we ended up watching the, the first tower fall live uh, you know in class, which was really kind of surreal. And this is something that you know I will never forget. You know 9/11 is a day that we will never forget. It, it changed the world. It changed the world forever. It is a turning point in US history. It launched us into the war on terrorism, uh, the war specifically in Afghanistan, if you've been watching the news, the war in Afghanistan you know, ended just a couple of weeks ago. Um, it was the longest war in US history. Um, and, and to think that this you know, all happened within the last 20 years, it's just, it's just hard to believe. I remember year, year in and year out, I, I would ask kids, you know, where were you that day? What do you remember? And then as the years goes on, but, you know, you, you guys weren't even born yet, so it, it's kind of crazy to think, you know, what, what do you guys remember from that day, or when, when did you learn about that day? How old were you? Did your parents tell you? Did your teachers tell you? And, um, you know, it's just, it's just still so all surreal. Uh, that day, too, I remember, you know, one of my best friends growing up worked there, and, you know, after 
students are saying, what's going on? What happened? And, you know, we, we didn't really know what to say. I'm like, I, I need to call my friend. And I tried to call him. And, we, you know, hours and hours later, finally got in touch with him. And he ended up being, you know, okay. But we didn't know. No one knew. And, and, and it seemed like so many people in the school knew somebody, family member, something that, that worked there or you know, knew someone that worked there. And, and it was kind of chaotic that day. A lot of kids were leaving early. And, and, and then the weeks and months to follow is I think what I remember the most of you know that, that whole experience because I think that there was just an overwhelming amount of patriotism um, that, that we saw and it was you know out of, out of bad came some good and you know all the, the police officers and the firefighters and the first responders you know who risked their lives and lost their lives um, we remember that and we can't forget that and I think as you know as a history teacher you know, we, we look at that and say, you know, we need to understand what happened on that day. It, it was a tragic day, yet, you know, a, a, an historic day, and never forget that. And days like that will help us understand, you know, what's going on today. You know, the events of the past help us understand the events of the present. And, and so I think it's so important to do things like this and remember, um, you know, days like this in American history. So I just wanted to share, you know, that brief story with you. and. Uh, you know, just don't forget, you know, maybe when you go home tonight, watch, you know, something on TV about it. And you hear these personal stories like we're going to hear, you know, Mr. Solomon, who, you know, I'm eager to hear his story. I've known him now for a couple of years and, and I did not know that he was there. Um, so I, I am eager to, to listen to him and, and please, you know, give him your undivided attention. Thank you. Good morning. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to say, if you could just bear with me, um, this is very emotional for me. Um, Mr. Thomas asked me yesterday if I could say a few words. At first, I thought to myself that I would not be able to do that. But then I thought that he was asking, it was important for me to express a message of you know what happened on that day. Um, <clears throat> Twenty years tomorrow, I found myself in the South Tower of the World Trade Center. I had the misfortune that day of being there. I say today as I'm standing in front of you that I have the good fortune that I'm here today and able to speak about it. Um, it, was, it was an horrific, horrific day. It's a day I'm always going to remember. There's days in your life as you, know, you get older, good and bad. You're going to remember those days. You're going to remember all the events of those days. You're going to remember minute by minute. I remember minute by minute uh, that day. The, proceed, the months after that, nine months after that, I was down at ground zero and working through uh, rescue and recovery and uh, doing security details around ground zero. And I remember every single minute of every day. Um, I'm gonna say this, um, the, I always reflect, every 9-11 every I reflect on what I would have done, what I would have been sorry I didn't do in my lifetime. Um, if I didn't get out of the building that day. The biggest thing that I will relay to you is if you have conflict in your life, whether with a friend or a family member or anybody, resolve those conflicts. Um, you, don't, you don't want those conflicts left behind and you don't want to think back and be regretful. So re resolve those conflicts, be good to one another. I saw so many good things that day People that came from all over the world to volunteer to help, and they were calling us heroes. And the police and fire and the EMS workers and emergency service workers weren't the heroes. The people who came there on their own time, took time away from their families to um, comfort the people who were working at Ground Zero, they were the real heroes. And several people would come up to me on just various different occasions, and they would just say, hey, you look like you need a hug today, and I did. And it got me through a bad time. A lot of emotions, emotion of sadness for the life that was lost needlessly, anger at the person, the persons who perpetrated the crimes, the terrorists. So all, all of those things, you know, um, they I always reflect back on that, you know, and uh, maybe a little bit of frustration that um, we didn't do more to stop it. Um, 2,800 people died that day. Um, 
they went to work in the morning and they might have said to their loved ones, you know, we'll talk about this when we get home or, uh, you know, I'll see you when I get home. They never made it home. So I'm here today. I'm thankful. I'm thankful for everyone who got me through 9-11. I'm thankful every day and when I, when I wake up that I'm here and that God's been good to me. Be good to others. Do for others. If you see somebody in need and you think there's somebody out there that's hurting or needs a hand, they're having a bad day, a bad week, whatever, they're going through a bad time, you know what? I tell my kids all the time, help that person. You know, be there for them. Be supportive of people. We're here for each other. we got to get through this all together, okay? And that's the message that I would say to all of you. Just, you know, be good to one another and help people out when they're down and they need help. Thank you. The Equal Rights Amendment constitutes that all American citizens, regardless of gender, race, or religion, should be treated equally. Furthermore, it is our solemn duty as Raiders to exemplify not only this amendment, but set an example for the schools around us. Treat your fellow peers with compassion and respect, even those who are rude to you, not because they are kind, but because you are. Too many good people lost their lives because a small group did not have acceptance of diversity or the empathy to consider their fellow man. In honor of them, it is up to you to have the courage to be better and create an atmosphere of acceptance and understanding. None of us alone can save the world, but each and every one of you can make a real positive difference, and that's all that really matters. Thank you, you may return to your second period.